Heaven. Paradise. The people of Bali claim to have discovered it first and right here on Earth. To the outsider, Bali may appear exotic and enchanting. But this island oasis is really just a mirage. In reality, the beauty and splendour is a mask. The Balinese also wear a mask living in bondage to spiritual forces and service to idols, trapped by hundreds of years of religious tradition. Bali. The name itself conjures up images of long sandy beaches, dense tropical jungles and volcanoes soaring up through the clouds. The majority of her people, the Balinese, still live in villages and farm in terraced rice paddies which ripple down the hillsides like giant steps. Here the charm of the people working in the fields or selling their wares in the marketplaces is relatively unspoiled by the commercialism in the southern coastal resorts. Situated in the middle of the Indonesian archipelago, Bali is world renowned as a jewel of the Orient and tourist hotspot. Up to one million tourists visit Bali every year. Where once a Balinese village dotted the landscape now stands a five-star hotel Bali's cheap cost of living makes it easy for foreigners to enjoy the good life at a good price. Likewise, the Balinese have also come to welcome the money they bring. The tourist dollars have sparked a cultural renaissance by helping to provide the Balinese with much needed economic outlets for their artistic talents and religious activities. From the Balinese businessman to the vendor on the street, Everyone, regardless of social standing, is brought up with a strong sense of culture and many are skilled in traditional arts. Intricate Balinese paintings convey an amazing wealth of information about the Balinese culture. The shimmering sound of a gamelan orchestra with its gongs and metallophones forms the basis of Balinese music. It's not only used for dance and drama, but also for social and religious ceremonies. Most dramas, such as this Barong dance, depict ancient Hindu stories that tell of a battle between good and evil. The masks of their major characters are believed to have magical powers. To the Balinese, it's not just entertainment, but a petition to the gods for the people to receive a blessing. Almost all Balinese arts are an expressive part of their spiritual culture. <laughs> About 900 years ago, Indian merchants brought the Hindu religion to Indonesia. Since then, Muslim and Dutch influences nearly wiped out all Hinduism throughout the islands. Yet today, Bali remains the last surviving Hindu stronghold among the predominantly Muslim Indonesian islands. Stepping away, however, from traditional Hinduism, the Balinese have adapted their own animistic rituals and beliefs. The basic tenet of the Balinese religion is the belief that the island is owned by the supreme god, Sangyang Widiwasa, and has been handed down to the people in sacred trust. The Balinese are concerned with pacifying dangerous forces which require constant and daily celebrations. Living in fear, they try to appease every god that is known and unknown. 
idols, altars and spirit houses are commonly found in front of temples, homes, businesses and entry gates. Offerings of flowers, rice, banana leaves and incense are placed before them daily to satisfy both good and evil spirits. The Balinese always try to stay on the good side of all forces and feel if the spirits are kept happy, they can relax and even be light-hearted. This need for communal acts of worship also binds their community's traditions and morals. The Balinese calendar is filled with hundreds of ceremonies throughout the year. There may be as many as 70,000 Hindu temples in Bali. Entire villages will go to the largest of these for their most important festivals. When we do ceremony, all these people coming inside for the, uh, for the fraying. For the fraying and then bring uh, many, many offerings for our God here, for the Iswara, Iswara or, or Justice God. And then for take uh, holy water for the clean body and the clean mind. And then some rice we put here for the symbol prosperity like that. For the Balinese, the most important day of their entire existence is the day of cremation. Often, the whole community joins the festival in a carnival mood. The body is carried to the cremation grounds in a high, multi-tiered bamboo tower that is twisted and turned to ensure the spirits can't find their way back to the house. Expensive and elaborate creations carrying the corpse will quickly disappear in flames. The purpose is to provide a grand send-off for the soul of the relative so that it might reach the higher world and rejoin the Hindu cycle of reincarnation. When the cremation is complete, the family sifts through the ashes to collect the bones. The ashes are taken to a priest where they're purified and then scattered to the sea. In Hindu, the philosophy is the human being have to work hard, uh, have to do a lot of things to find God or to find the, the salvation. So we have to work hard to find the salvation by using ritual ceremonies. But there is no guarantee and there is no clear way what we needed to do to get the heavenly life. Foreign workers and local Christians endeavour to show the Balinese that there is a clear way to heaven. Some have given their entire lives sowing seeds of faithfulness among this needy people. The peace that mankind seeks. And back in those days, all the way from Denpasar, all the way to the eastern end of the island, there wasn't any resident Christian witness. Mm. And when we first settled in Klong Kong, in the seat of the Hindu dynasty in this island, the Lord did open the heart of one of the most influential men in this island. He opened one of his residences for us to live in. And I remember, Lydia, that, that old king, one of his uh, court retainers, one of his servants, came, he sneered at me with his red beetle state lips and say, you'll never make any converts here. <laughs> and I said to myself, you're right, we never will, but the Lord will because he is faithful. Christian ministry and church planting continues among the Balinese, but the ministry path has not always been easy. Among the 3.7 million Balinese, less than half of 1% are Christians. Some Balinese still feel that the acceptance of Christianity is synonymous with the acceptance of Western culture over their own. How much of the Balinese culture and traditional arts can be used within the Christian community to honour God? How can Bali truly become an island of people who enjoy their traditional arts while praising and worshipping the creator of their artistic creativity? I myself as a Christian can to bring the gospel to the people here in Bali because they, uh, they see uh, the subject of the painting it is very strange. And they will have a question, why the subject of your painting like this and like this? And from that case, uh, I get a, a good chance to explain the gospel. I need the Balinese arts as instrument to bring the gospel here because if we are in our culture here in Bali, we are not look like a foreign people. Because a Balinese people first they thinking that a Christian is a foreign religion. Balinese Christians are also partnering with foreign workers to demonstrate that becoming a Christian does not mean giving up all Balinese culture. 
The children here are trained to sing and to dance and they are also have to learn how to play Balinese music gamelan. Our vision is that our children as the pillar of our community, they are able to preach the gospel in our own cultures in singing and in dancing. In Blembing Sari, a village in the western part of Bali, a vibrant community of Balinese Christians have demonstrated how to contextualize their faith in the midst of Balinese culture. This Balinese Christian community needs to reproduce and flourish among other parts of Bali. Yet the majority of Balinese are part of a community governed by a local town council called the Banjar. The intense feeling of belonging, together with the all-pervading influence of their religion, which nobody seriously questions, have led Balinese to regard their island and community as a world in itself. Because Hinduism is the main influence in the Banjar, many times Christians are not allowed to participate in communal life. Those who do turn to Christ are often cast out of the Banjar and discriminated against even by their own families. With the community bond broken, witnessing and discipleship become nearly impossible. This places a great burden on converts who are left as outcasts in their own community. Some Christians have been influential despite persecution. During this cremation ceremony, the entire village, including the Banjar, came out to pay respect to this man, even though he was a Christian. Because he was really involved in both the good and hard times, we as the village community really felt the role of Mr. Imade in our Banja. The main factor in Bonis coming to Jesus Christ is the incarnational witness that they see, certainly in, in the one who comes to tell them of Jesus, but mostly their own Balinese who have come to the Lord. The changed lives. They no longer make offerings to their gods, to their deities, but they're happy. And in spite of persecution, they're joyful. The Bible said, whoever believes in Jesus Christ, he will gain everlasting life. We just believe that. And that is a promise. And in Hinduism, there is no promise like this. Short and long-term workers are encouraged to come and share the Lord's eternal promise and teach biblical truth in culturally relevant ways. Bali has, is just encrusted with layer after layer of darkness. But every prayer that goes up for Bali by God's believing people and every witness given in the name of Jesus, every one of those is like just stripping away another layer. And one day, I believe we'll see many, many more people free, set free here in Bali. So we need concerted prayer because it is a spiritual warfare. Pray that there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit over pastors and their congregations to bring a wave of God's power and His love to the island. Pray for Balinese Christians to be released from fear and that God would give increased opportunities to witness to their countrymen and especially to community and family leaders. Pray that the Balinese Christians would come to see their role in the fulfilment of the Great Commission and rise up to the task of discipling others. Biblical training of new believers is one of the main ways to see the church grow. Pray for the release of workers who are sensitive to the Balinese culture and for the successful contextualization of the church. Hidden behind a mask live a people Jesus loves and for whom he died to set free. Our prayers and ministry among the Balinese can help to lift off the mask of their bondage, revealing their true beauty as they offer their lives in worship and dance before the King of Kings. Sing at His feet.